Hey guys, this is System, and this is Encrypted. Hope you're all having a great day. Let's go ahead and jump back into this pretty cool pack of uh, in between episodes. The pack has been updated, the end game has changed. We've got a couple of new mods, and uh, I pretty much built a mob farm. We're gonna go ahead and set it up. I guess I built a box, so let's kind of take a look, see, and uh, kind of push forward here. So, first thing, the pack here. So, we got the big change here on the end game. Actually, have an end game item that we actually have to craft to be able to say we finished the pack. Have this finished program. And it looks pretty cool, actually. It uh, takes all of the different rate of items. So it's going to be a lot of work to get this done. But uh, yeah, finish this, get back to reality, right? Because we're trapped inside of a computer. That is the concept of the pack. And I thought that was pretty neat, but it takes every creative. So it'll be a lot of work, and uh, we'll work towards that in time. I thought that was neat. Then up here, I guess we don't have a quest line now for all of the, the shop. The shop's gone, right? Instead, in this quest here, you get this item here, the Amazon tablet. And with that, you can actually access a shop in here to be able to do all your purchases. So really good way of doing it. You notice there's trades like this too. So I could actually go ahead and buy this right now. Just right click and left click, kind of go make it go up and down. You only do like 16 trades a day, but I can actually get ender pearls, right? I'll show you where that's coming from too. Over here in this chest, I have a chest full of coal. You just kind of grab this when you get it. You notice a drone came, it just went and grabbed a bunch of the coal. You shift and right click this on a chest to bind it, put the items inside, and the items have to be in there for the drone to pick them up before I'll do the trade, right? So basically just traded all that coal for some emeralds. So you notice I already have 31, just a neat little way to kind of do the system there. So that is red. The mods that were changed here, we got a couple mods here. One was um, frame blocks, right? This is like the old carpentry mod, except for I think it has a little more to it, right? So it has like these bouncy blocks and some other ones, right? But basically I can make, uh, say, this frame slope panel, right? Put in the world, I get this fancy shape, right? Then I take a block and use it on it. It uses up the block, but it makes it uh, mimic that shape. So you can basically get yourself really cool shapes as well as use a lot of blocks. I, I don't know if in this version, but you used to be able to use blocks that you wouldn't normally be able to build with too. So pretty neat there. And uh, that is pretty cool as well. The other one was uh, chipped. We got chipped as well, which is kind of like a chisel mod and uh, gives you a whole bunch of different block variants, right? So here's, uh, I guess there, there's granite right there. They have all these kind of cool blocks here. Have to make the appropriate table for the appropriate material. So there's like one for stone, one for glass, one for wool, so on and so forth. But it has a lot of building blocks if you like to do that kind of thing, right? So really cool mod there. The last one is looter. Looter is for servers. So if you're both staying in a nether fortress and there's a chest, you both have to get your own individual set of loot from the chest. So one guy looks at it, he sees one thing, the other guy looks at it, he sees another. So really good for servers. So that is pretty cool there. The thing that I did in between episodes mainly, I guess the first thing too, I haven't put out an episode for two days. It's just been too hot to record. Uh, I've been working on other videos from my other channels, right? But I don't talk in those ones. When I tried to talk, it's like literally, what, four degrees Celsius, I guess is what it was. With the humidity, it wasn't like base uh, four degrees. I guess that's like 100 uh, Fahrenheit, right? It, uh, yeah, I just can't function. I can't talk and do that at the same time. So I've been working on other stuff, but yeah, it's finally cool enough today. So hopefully it stays that way. But anyway, I went ahead and set up this mob farm here and uh, we're gonna get this all automated and ready to go. So just a big box here. I made it out of viridium, which is a great material uh, as well as okram. And uh, you get that from the, I got that from the builder, from the, uh, the building dimension, right? So that's cool. Made some of these here, white elevators have a little room down here. So we could actually uh, set up, this could be where the items come when they're at the mobs are killed. Have this here, a mob basher. That's what's going to do the killing. A little expensive, but at the same time, not too bad at all. Also, I have some of these mob bands. That's what uh, going to blow the mobs. It's going to blow the mobs and the items to the central area. And that'll kind of handle that. Have this here, an absorption hopper. I could actually go ahead and put that down right now. There you go. That's what's going to pick up the items, right? So we have this here. Uh, that isn't hard to make either. You just have to make sure you have an editor pearl and some blaze, right? I need to go ahead and set the offsets on this too. Let's go ahead and go to show area. That'll be the area where it picks up items, but I know it goes like below as well. So I want to go a little higher. So that'll be the area there. There's actually another upgrade we can do for that too. Let's get to at mob. There's like a range one. Yeah, this one here. Let's go ahead and uh, grab one of them. Wait, oh, I wasn't in the right thing. Let's do that. Here you go. Go ahead and grab a hopper. Cool. And that'll make it so it can cover the entire mob farm. Then I don't have to worry about the corners because they are kind of problematic. You go. So there you go. That is the range of that. You notice there it's already picked up an interpol. And if I throw something out of my inventory, it gets automatically picked up. This thing's really quick. The other thing we're going to have here is a laser node, but we'll do that in a few minutes. I made a bunch of upgrades too, actually, for the Bob Basher. 
have these ones here, uh, the sharpness upgrades. They'll make it so it does 10 more damage per kind of hit. Should pretty much insta-kill most mobs. We have this one here, Mob Masher uh, upgrade looting. These ones here just make them drop more items, so I'll have those as well. Have one of these as well. This is a Ender Inhibitor. This will just make it so any kind of mob that can teleport can't teleport within a certain number of blocks. You right click, turn it on and off. I just want to have one of those in here so no mobs can teleport around. And the fans by default go to show area. That's all they blow, right? So I think it's like eight blocks in front of it that'll actually blow, right? If it has a red zone signal, it's not on right now. So I went ahead and made some of these uh, with upgrades, right? So you go ahead and put three of those in there. That's the most that it could take. That'll cover the bulk of the bob farm, right? So that would be pretty useful there. We're going to go ahead and put dreadful dirt into this too. That'll make it so mobs can spawn into this uh, uh, mob farm as well, as well as the blaze spawner. So we'll have mobs coming from two different areas here, which is pretty cool. Go ahead and do that. You need to make sure too you're in the right biome. So if you're in an ocean, like right now I'm in plains. I got lucky, spawned in plains. But if you're not in the plains, you're going to have to have a mob farm somewhere else, basically. So I made some of these here. These are aluminum blocks. I'm going to use this for a lighting system for the mob farm. So I can go ahead and turn it on and off. These are inverted. So when they get a red set signal, they actually turn off. And I wanted that. That's, uh, I was looking for an inverted light. I found these. These are from uh, Simply Light, which is actually a cool little light mod there. Anyway, that is good there. Cool. Then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and make it so we turn everything off and on with a single button hit. So what we'll do, go ahead and maybe put like a button right there. These are the two button machine, machine switches for gauges and switches. They're weird to craft, you have to craft them with themselves, right? So you have all these different ones, right? They're all pretty much the same thing. The main thing is you can use interpros on them and link them up to each other. So that's gonna be what we do here. End up having one on the spawner. Probably won't leave that uh, lever anymore either. So let's get rid of you. Oh, that just went in there too, didn't it? Go ahead and grab that. Sweet. And then we'll want one of these on every one of these fans as well. So we'll go ahead and get that in place. Then we need to go ahead and uh, get these set up to all be wireless at the same time. Then we'll have one down here on the center block, right? That's gonna be one that powers the mob masher. Let's go ahead and grab some ender pearls here. That is not enough. Let's go ahead and go to here. Go ahead and go to ab. A few ender pearls, probably more than we need. Cool. And then I only want one at a time. Basically when you go ahead and right click on one of these, it turns into this, a switch link pearl, uh, which is basically going to set that as the target for another one of these buttons, right? So go ahead and put this here now. When I hit it, it actually turns out the mob basher and that is kind of the idea. So we'll be able to do that for everything. And when I do it with these ones with the lights on them, so I do that, put that right there, it's actually gonna turn the fan on and the lights off, which means the mob farm will work, right? So that could be how I turn this on and off. I'll say you don't wanna do like a stack of uh, pearls at a time. Because I'll kind of show you what happens here. So if I do this, <laughs> go ahead and grab an entire stack. I got nine of those. And I don't want nine. Nine is not good. You can turn the back blade, right? Yeah, there you go. We only want one. So that's why I keep separating them there. Let's go ahead and put that there. Sweet. And then I guess we just have the one more. Then we'll go ahead and go to the next part. We're also going to have to go ahead and make some prismarine crystals too. Those are going to be used on the spawner. So you can use those on the spawner. Make sure everything's going on and off now. You go to be able to uh, make it so it has further activation range because right now the activation range I have to be within 16 blocks and that's just not acceptable because our base is kind of over that way right so that's the thing and that oh I put that in the wrong one oh no uh, well I have to do another one of those I'm not sure we'll, we'll try this real quick do that sweet we got our pearl back cool I, I'm not sure if this is going to remember where it's linked to I guess it's the only thing I'm not sure but anyway, uh, the pearl. Which one is not set right now? The spawner, right? I just uh, I just messed up everything. I guess I had this one set right and I set it. There you go. Then we put it uh, right here, right? There you go. Is the mob farm on? Everything's on. So there you go. That is working. That is fantastic. You may notice down there too in the bottom left, it says new daily offers are now available. That's the Amatron. Once a day, it actually updates and you have different trades in here as well. So that's kind of how that works as well. But now we have a way to turn our mob farm completely on and off, which is fantastic. And I guess the next thing we need to work on is item extraction. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to go ahead and make some of these here. What are they called there? The, we're gonna use um, laser IO. I think it's gonna be the mod we use, right? So we need these logic chips. So let's go ahead and make a good batch of them. Maybe like 32, do a little crafting, set up the extraction. Then we need to do some hunting with great. 
Then we'll have a fully working mob farm here. There you go, they're all smelted up, they're ready to go. Also went ahead and grabbed a bunch of lapis here, so we're gonna need some calcium in a bit. And this is a good way of getting that, I think. Get ourselves a, at least a little bit of it, right? That is good there. Then we'll probably go ahead and convert this all over in a bit. Maybe I'll drop that off, because that's kind of a mess. Also went ahead and grabbed some uh, clocks and some sugars, so we can go ahead and uh, speed up the actual spawner as well. As well as some vector plates, probably gonna throw those in there too, because I saw a problem that's gonna probably happen. And uh, that should be good there. Anyway, let's go ahead and drop you off. We need ourselves a uh, laser wrench. Let's go ahead and get one of them. We're also gonna need a laser node. Probably need a couple of these, so need two of these laser connectors. Then we should be able to grab two laser nodes, which is fantastic. Then we'll need two item cards. So let's grab two of them. And then we need the other card there. It's a uh, fluid. Go ahead and grab that as well. So we'll be able to move fluids as well, right? So that, that. And we'll only need two of each for the initial setup. There you go. I'll have to have a couple more when we set up a drawer wall as well. But uh, this will be just for the initial getting the Bob Farm kind of working setup here. Now let's go ahead and uh, grab some blocks here. I want to get these vector plates in place first. So I noticed that the corners, the fans can't reach here, right? So what we'll do is just have a single vector plate to push them into fan range. So if I just have them kind of like here, go ahead and do that. When you place these two and if you're standing on them, just hold shift and you don't push out. Let go and they just push it forward. Also, mobs are going to end up, I guess, uh, the blazes will end up uh, spawning on top of here and getting stuck on top of that. I want to go ahead and just deal with that issue right now. So go ahead and do that. And he'll just, uh, I guess, the, split, the blaze when they spawn up there will get pushed forward. Then come down to the fan range there as well. To go ahead and uh, set up the laser node, so, so this is what we're going to do. Let's do that. Laser node is going to be how we move all the items around, right? So I'm gonna put it up here. Should be able to interact with this absorption hopper from that point, right? So we'll want to go ahead, I guess, and uh, get this other laser node in place first. So we'll go down here. We'll do something like that right there. So it's right under the button. Then we grab the laser wrench, shift and right click on it. Go ahead and head back up here. Then we, we right click on this one, get a little red beam showing they're kind of like on a network, right? So that's cool. We're gonna want uh, one of each of these guards. So go ahead and set one to extract and the other one to extract, which is fantastic. You can change the channels too. So if you want to do like no, multiple kind of different channels to move different things around, you can do that. We don't need that for this setup here, I don't think. So we are good. And then what else do we need here? Need that, we'll have the two inserts. These are already set basically. We don't have to set anything with those. Probably some overclockers just for the item card. The overclockers are going to make them so they just work faster basically. So that's kind of the idea. Because right now, I think it would only move like uh, eight items per kind of operation, right? So what we do, yeah, I think it's eight by by the max. I think you can't move, uh, lower the tick speed. But if you put in the overclockers, do that. Should be able to put that up to 64. And I'll probably put that down to like five ticks. Shouldn't have to be any faster than that, right? So that is good there. Then we'll go ahead and put that into the bottom. Just make sure you're kind of putting things on the right side. So they have like six different sides, right? Each side could have... Uh, nine cards, so that's the thing. Anyway, there you go. That should be able to ex uh, extract the items and the experience and move them to a different inventory. We have some deep slate in there, so when we set it up down here, we should be able to instantly see that it worked right. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this tank. This is just a really big tank too. Jumbo tank holds a thousand buckets, so just a whole bunch of singularity tanks. There you go. And then we go ahead and grab our souls, a backpack, which we should probably upgrade actually. Let's go ahead and go to Yusu and Yum. Just so it can hold a bunch more stuff. Uh, where am I at here? There you go. Head there. Awesome. Get that up to iron. Cool. Then we want that up to gold. And then we go ahead and get that up to diamond. There's actually one more size after this as well, but uh, we don't have that right now. There you go. I guess we need netherite to do that. Actually, wait, what? What's going on there? I'm so confused. What just happened there? <laughs> Why won't it uh, upgrade? Oh, I didn't actually do the, the gold one. I don't know how I managed that, but anyway, do that. Go ahead and grab you. There we go. Go ahead and uh, take that, pop that right there. The reason I use the backpack too, because it has these void upgrades that you put in these upgrade slots, right? So at this level, we can put in five of these and each one of these will make it so we can set a void list to make it so certain items when they come into the backpack, they instantly get voided off. I don't have to filter them from that point. So. That's the main reason I use it a backpack here. But now that we have that set up, we should be able to grab this item card. This is just a by default or insert cards, insert cards, right? 
So I'll try to insert items in here. You notice the cobble deep slate went into there. That was up in the hopper, right? And we should be able to do the same thing over there. That is good. Then we should be able to go ahead and uh, turn on the mob farm here and uh, see if everything's working. Let's go ahead and grab some, what is that there? The tinted glass, right? The stuff for mob grinding utilities. Cool. Just takes coal and glass to make that stuff too. It's super easy. Go. Then we should be able to turn this on and see if this thing's working. Wait a second. What's with the light levels? Oh, don't tell me these are bleeding light. Are you bleeding light? Do I have to put blocks behind them? That's kind of a pain in the butt. I need to go ahead and uh, try this real quick. See if that's a light issue. That won't be an issue for the blaze spawner, but it might be, it's definitely gonna be an issue for the other one, right? So that's working, so that's fantastic. We go ahead and speed that up a little bit too. So what we'll do is go ahead and grab these clocks. Go ahead and uh, throw those in the air. Notice that the max spawn delay is going down. So we're gonna get that uh, down uh, a decent amount. I'm not gonna max it out. I think you need a little bit more than a stack to be able to fully max it out, right? That should be more enough. So every 160 ticks, it'll actually try to fire. And I think we can put a little more sugar in there too. And I guess the minimum time that it would be would be one second in between kind of spawn cycles, right? So I am good there. I have to figure out something else there though. That's gonna bother me anyway. For right now, that fixes the light issue at least. Um, that's weird that they would make light blocks that respond to redstone signals bleed light. That just, yeah, that's just, I, I don't like that. Anyway, so we do that now and that should work a little better. I wanna make sure all the items actually kind of get put down here too, right? So in here, we got uh, our items. We got ourselves 22 blaze rods already, miniature red hearts and a molten core. So that is actually pretty rad. It's doing the thing and the stuff that it needs to. Is that spawner actually working? How much is uh, 160 ticks? I feel like that should have already gone again. Did I mess something up? <laughs> I can't see it there either. I can't see if that spawner's working. The light level shouldn't matter actually. Is that on right now? Oh, it is working. Okay, cool. So it's working, it's doing its thing. So next thing we'll do is, uh, I guess we'll leave that on for now. There you go. We need to go ahead and do our bulk haunting, right? So that's gonna make it so we get prismarine to increase the activation range of the spawner, right? So let's go ahead and get to that. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do there is use a crate mechanic to actually go ahead and uh, get us prismarine crystals. So we go ahead and use those on the spawner to increase the activation range up to 48. So. It'll still work when I'm over here, right? Because right now it won't actually work because we're not within 16. And uh, that's not what I want to see with my life. So I saw something else actually. We could do this now. This was added at some point. I don't know which update did this, but do that. And you grab andesite, right? Then you do this right here. And you can actually make andesite casings just like that. So that is a different option to do that for sure. And I was not aware of that. But anyway, that's a thing. I should grab the rest of those casings though. That is good. Let's go ahead and uh, hunt down. What do we need here? We need the case fan. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can actually make one of them. Let's go ahead and grab a hammer here. Awesome. And uh, we'll grab like eight of these plates because we'll end up making more of those anyway at some point. You know what? Let's make like 20. Because <laughs> I'll just end up doing more of that anyway. That's good. Go ahead and grab ourselves this here. No, not that out there. This here. Need a propeller. That is good. Then we'll grab the encased fan. Then what else do we need here? We'll need a bearing because we'll have to have some kind of rotational force to actually get this to work as well. So we need uh, one of those. Cool. Then we'll need some wool. We need at least eight wool to be able to make this work. Or you can make some sails, but I'm just going to use eight wool because uh, that uh, will get the job done for what I need right now. And uh, anything else we need here? Probably a shaft. We're going to go pretty minimal setup here for our needs. So that's good. And what is the last thing we probably need? A piece of soul sand and a flinted steel. Let's go ahead and grab a soul sand and a flinted steel. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, get this set up here. Probably don't have any flint right now. Go ahead and grab you. Awesome. And that should be pretty much everything we need. We'll just set this up over here. Like I said, this is a very temporary setup. So let's go ahead and grab a soul sand. Pop that down. Go ahead and grab ourselves a case fan. Put that there. It's going to blow air onto the soul sand that is lit on fire, right? So it has the, the blue fire there. And that's going to convert the lapis into perspiring. Basically, it's going to be the mechanic here. Uh, we're going to need a shaft. So let's put a shaft back here. That little round bit is where the rotational force has to go in. Then we got these little bearings here. And this could be what actually produces the power to make it uh, actually blow air. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grab this wool. Probably just lay it out like this. We're doing it real jank right now, mind you. 
but we're working towards getting large amounts of blaze rods so we don't have to do this anymore. We'll be able to use blaze burners in the boiler setup to be able to uh, produce power, right? Oh yeah, we need, uh, what is it called there? Glue. We need some glue as well. Go ahead and uh, hunt that down. Oh, it actually takes those as well. So it's a good thing I made more of those uh, plates there. There you go. I think people said this changed now too as well. So you kind of like right click the block. It'll glue all these blocks together and we kind of drag it around now. Didn't used to be able to do this, but you just do one point and the other point. They should be all glued together. And basically I should be able to just go ahead. You notice it says there. Also I made this too. I made the goggles. So I'm wearing the goggles right now. So I have that as well as I made the wrench. So this is uh, that wrench right there. Just takes up those gold plates. We see there it says uh, right click with an empty hand to make it start working. There you go. Because they're all glued together, they move as a single entity. And if you look at it, it says it's producing 512 uh, 12 stress units. This thing only takes two. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we could speed that up and make it go faster, but we can't right now. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab some lapis. Uh, lapis? We grabbed a bunch, right? Yeah, let's do a good batch. I saw the returns on the crystals was really low. You get way more of the, what is the other one? Shards, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just get a bunch of this in here. Maybe a little further away so I don't actually pick it all up because that'd be fantastic. There you go. And you notice there, they're kind of like on fire. They should slowly convert, basically, is what it's going to do. And uh, yeah, should work out pretty well. Hopefully, convert for me. Do the thing. Give me my crystals. Actually, is that working? <laughs> it's doing a weird little kind of like pulsating thing. I think it's working. You can also see it's slowly pushing the crystals as well. Hopefully it's not pushing it outside the fire. Oh, there you go. Some is converting. Hopefully the rest of it goes as well. As long as uh, we get the bulk of it, we're good. There you go. Uh, at this low power, my goodness, this thing works slow. Usually it goes way faster than this. Come on, last one. You can do it. I can see it. It's on fire. If it doesn't work, I'm just going to pick it up here to suck it anyway. Looks like it's out of range. Anyway, also when you touch this stuff, it kind of gives you darkness or I guess blindness, I guess. Got a good amount of those those and that there so we got everything we need actually so let's actually head back over to the spawner and uh, see if we can get this sorted out go ahead and turn that off for a second that looks good go ahead and uh, grab these crystals these are way more than we need too so every time i use it you'll notice that the activation range is going up and that should max out at 48 is if uh, i read it correctly yeah far from the fight so that is good there it makes it so we don't have to be close by cool so that should work way better now. So when I'm over crafting, we should be close enough to have this keep going and keep making us blaze rods. That's so cool. Awesome. That is uh, really rad, actually. And uh, we'll have to sort this out with the... I think these do the... Um, what are these here? The molded cores? You go to use on those. I'm pretty sure you get blaze rods from these as well. I think it's just a crafting recipe. Yeah, you actually get four. So they are actually from Reliquary. So we'll definitely want to keep those too. And then I guess now the next thing we should do is go ahead and actually make our rotten egg. And that should be too bad, actually. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we get that done really quickly. Go ahead and uh, drop you off, you off, you off. That looks good. And then we should have, what is it here? Calcium. Uh, I need to get that organized. Let's see here. Calcium. There you go. Because I think we needed calcium carbonate. I forget what carbonate is. I think it's oxygen. Let's see here. I think it's oxygen and charcoal, or carbon, right? Okay, we should be able to go ahead and make our egg now. So it's the calcium carbonate and protein, right? So the calcium carbonate and protein. There we go, got some eggs. We got two of them, we only need one, that's fine. And with that, we should be able to go ahead and actually make a rotten egg, right? Go ahead and uh, throw those in there. And then sulfur, we needed sulfur as well. We got a little bit there. Do we have any more in the system here? I don't know what's really good for sulfur. I should probably look that up at some point. You know what's really good for sulfur? Sulfur, which you can actually get from the uh, mining dimension. Kind of forgot I had this stuff. Go ahead and do that. There you go. Go ahead and do that there. There you go. There is uh, enough sulfur, hopefully. And that's cool. Put the egg in the center. Got a rotten egg. And we should just have to use that on the uh, dirt that we have over there. And I'll turn that into dreadful dirt. So that should be pretty much the end of the setup here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off. There you go. You, uh, oh, I need to turn that on for a split second. There you go. Sweet. And then I guess we'd have to go ahead and break this as well. I'll have to go ahead and grab our upgrades real quick. Sweet. That's going to drive me crazy. Anyway, I'll figure that out. There you go. Maybe I can use some of those, uh, framed blocks. Yeah. Maybe something like that. Maybe there's like a little slab version, vertical slab version. I think I saw that actually. So we should be able to use those. 
Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, put that there. There you go. Got our dreadful dirt. Good thing it's off right now because there'd be bad mobs in here. If we just do that and go ahead and uh, drop off our upgrades. And this thing should be spawning other mobs now. So let's go ahead and see if it's actually working here. Yep. And kind of watch it and uh, see how it works. It just it just killed something. <laughs> that might have been one of those big zombie brute things. I forget which mod adds those. Also got some witches. And this bag is going to fill up really quick. So I need to start, uh, I guess, filtering these things. Like these marks of the cancel. I'm not even going to worry about those. I don't want those. Let's go ahead and uh, drop that. There you go. Now I'm going to filter off a lot of the stuff because I don't think we need... Like, I don't know if we actually need to do any mana of artifice. And if so, it's not like you need a ton of them anyway. What are zombie hearts used for? Don't even know. Don't know if we need to keep that either, to be honest. Gold nuggets, don't really care. Yeah, I don't see anything I care in there about that either. So we'll do that. There you go. And there you go. Hopefully that'll void it off. I can't remember if it has to be on block, block or allow. We'll figure that out pretty soon, too. But I guess my next kind of goal here is to go ahead and get this filtered. I'll probably be doing this for a little while because uh, it's going to be a pain in the butt otherwise. So I think I have this uh, pretty much all filtered here, which is awesome. So in here, I guess not fully filtered, but I have uh, most of it filtered, I guess. So anyway, notice this is all the stuff that I'm trying to keep. So that is cool. A lot of stuff from Reliquary could be crafted into other items, so it's very useful to keep. These here, we already have 106 stacks of blaze rods. I, it's going to fill up so quick, it's going to be insane, actually. Um, probably need some more drawer upgrades right away, actually. I definitely want to get a void on that one. Uh, where's that, uh, void upgrade? Can I, do I have, yeah, I have everything, right? Go ahead and do, uh, that right there. I think I already have two in there. So it can hold 512 stacks, but it's not going to take very long, basically. Also, this here, I have a second void in here. I was going to use this for the tools and stuff that come in. So I go ahead and do that. And set that to ignore durability. That should void those off. I guess I'll have to wait until another one comes in. I guess I just won't see another one come in. If, if another one comes in, then it doesn't work, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, that's the thing there. Probably have to do the same thing for enchanted things. So that's the thing as well. Also, if you want your drawers to go around a corner like this, you need to make some of these, these oak trims. So actually, right behind this one. Oh, we have bows in the system. That's not good. I messed something up. Anyway, have the oak trim there. That just makes it so the drawers can kind of go around corners, right? So that's the thing. Need my key here, and pull you up, get you locked again. That must have got in there in the split second that I did not uh, have the drawer locked there. But yeah, there you go. It's a uh, working mob farm, fully working, getting lots of loot, all kinds of stuff. We don't have to worry about slime or enderpearls anymore. We don't have to worry about uh, a lot of other materials. What mob is taking that much damage? What could possibly I don't know what that was, but it was big. <laughs> anyway, it's dead. It looked like a big night or something. It was so dark, it was hard to tell. That might be one of those uh, mana artifice mobs. Some of those guys are actually beefy. Anyway, that is good. And uh, that is right. Like, everything seems like it's working pretty well. Here. And actually, I want to test out this bow thing. Because that's kind of an issue. If uh, they're going to keep coming to the system. Also, why isn't that picking up experience? Why are experience stuck there? Oh, because the fan was off. Okay, it, they're off right now anyway. Yeah, it is picking up. So I need to check that real quick. But if I take these bows now, throw those down, I want to make sure they're getting void off because otherwise that's going to gum up the entire system in time. Let's go there. They're gone. They're not in any drawers. So that uh, filter here is actually working. So it does work with the ignore durability. And that's really what I need to know. So yeah, fully working mob farm. I just need to sort out this because that's going to drive me insane. But... Other than that, everything is uh, working great over here. It's just a matter of, uh, I guess, drawer upgrades. So I've gone ahead and made some of these. These uh, frame wall boards are from that uh, frame block mod, which is pretty cool. They actually block light, and they're super thin. So you have to make one of these hammers here, then some of these panels, which is not too bad. We just go ahead and put them down, use a block on them, covers it up. Barely know it's there, and it blocks light. That's all that matters. It's doing the thing, right? So that's cool. Also, that thing is totally backed up with experience already. I don't know how we manage. Oh, I didn't actually make our tank a new one. There you go, right here, there you go. It's, uh, yeah, backed up with experience. It's already got a thousand buckets in that one tank. So I don't know how we got the experience that quickly. Maybe some mob is just dropping massive experience or something, because that's crazy. It's actually insane. <laughs> that should get caught up there in a second. Because yeah, this has not been running very long, like 20, 30 minutes tops, and uh, yeah, 1,000 buckets right there. Uh, that, that's that's crazy. 
Yeah, wait, really cool, really awesome. It's doing the thing. Nothing else has been coming in. Also, someone could tell me to, I don't know, I don't know how to do this. I've never had to do this before. I must have did something when I started out the pack. I locked myself in normal. I want to be on hard so I get enchanted stuff. Can you, is there a way to get past that? Is that a thing I can do? Is that a thing? If so, yeah, definitely let me know. Maybe I'll just Google, but either way. Also, that vector plate is really slow. I may need a faster vector plate because they do come off, but my goodness, they come off slow. Anyway, that is good. And that is awesome. And uh, we got ourselves a fully working muff farm. So I think that is uh, pretty much for today. Probably going to go ahead and wrap this one up. We'll come back in the next video and set up our broiler. Get ourselves a mess amount of uh, power for the great mod. So the stress units and the rotational force. And then we'll move forward from that point, right? So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. Really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. When you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.